Back in England's oldest times, people lived in big groups called tribes. They were farmers, they grew their food, and kept animals for meat and eggs. They lived in villages, in wooden or mud houses, and there was often fighting between the different tribes. Life was simple but dangerous. Then in AD 43, 40,000 Roman soldiers invaded England from the area of Europe that is now Italy. The Roman army was very well organized and had good weapons. The soldiers built a wall around themselves every night so they were safe. They moved across the country, fighting and winning battles against the different tribes. And after four years they controlled the south of England. The Romans had to fight for many years before they controlled all of England. They made many changes in the country, such as building towns and cities and good roads. They brought a new language to England, Latin, and made laws. So people knew what they could and could not do. The religion of Christianity came to England in Roman times too. The Romans never took control of Scotland, which is north of England. And Scottish tribes came to fight against them in the north of England again and again. Because of this, in the 2nd century AD, the Romans built a wall to stop the Scottish tribes coming to England. This wall between England and Scotland was 120 kilometers long and was called Hadrian's Wall. For English people in towns and cities, life in Roman times was good. Towns now had clean water and sores, pipes taking away dirty water, and there were strong walls around them. So people felt safe. People came to the towns to buy and sell things, and food became more interesting and enjoyable. To relax. People could go to special bathhouses, where they met their friends, kept clean and exercised. But after AD 250, Roman soldiers began to leave England. They had to fight in other parts of the world, and it was too expensive and difficult for them to keep England safe. By AD 411, all the Roman soldiers had left England. Then the Anglo Saxons, from Germany, the Netherlands, and Denmark, began to arrive. The Anglo Saxons had come to England several times before, but the Romans had always defeated them. Now, with the Romans gone, the English could not win battles against the Anglo Saxons and many Anglo-Saxons came to live in England. The Anglo-Saxons did not like the Romans' towns, so they did not use them, and the towns stayed empty. The Anglo-Saxons built their own villages near rivers or the sea and made wooden houses. In their villages, they grew crops, plants they could use for food. They also kept pigs, sheep and cows, and caught fish and other animals. By AD 600 in England, the Anglo-Saxons had made seven kingdoms, different parts of the country, each controlled by its own king. The four main kingdoms were Northumbria, Mercia, East Anglia and Wessex. The three minor kingdoms were Essex, Kent and Sussex. In each of these kingdoms, the king had nobles, important men who fought for him. The other people in the kingdom were either peasants or slaves. Peasants were poor people who had some land, but had to give money to the nobles. Slaves had nothing and had to work for other people for no money at all. People bought and sold slaves like animals. The Anglo Saxons stayed in England. But in AD 793 a new group of people invaded the country. The Vikings. 
from Norway, Sweden and Denmark wanted good farming land. They came to England in strong wooden ships and soon they took control of many parts of the country. But the Anglo-Saxon king of Wessex, Alfred the Great, won a big battle against the Vikings. After this, part of England, called Danelaw, was given to the Vikings. But the Vikings had to promise not to invade other parts of the country. After Alfred the Great died, the Viking and Anglo-Saxon parts of England came together. And England was now ruled as one country with one king. The Vikings and the Anglo-Saxons continued to fight a lot. And for a while England had Viking kings. But by 1042, the Anglo-Saxon king Edward ruled England. With Edward as the king, London became the most important city in England. Edward had many nobles. And he let them become very powerful. He had no children. So when he died, one of his nobles, Harold, became the king. But Edward's cousin William, a Norman from the north of France, believed that he should be the king of England. In October 1066, William brought a big Norman army from France to England. The Normans fought against Harold and his soldiers at the Battle of Hastings. Harold was killed. And William the Conqueror, as he was called, became the King of England. William the Conqueror made many important changes in England. A lot of castles were built. One of these was the Tower of London, which you can visit today. William the Conqueror brought the feudal system to England. In the feudal system, the richest and most important person was the king. Below the king were the nobles, then the knights and then the serfs, who were the poorest people in the land. The king owned everything in the country, but he gave a castle and land to his nobles, and they paid him money. The nobles gave land to the knights, who had to fight battles for the nobles and the king. The knights gave some land to the serfs, who had to work for the knights and give them food from the land. William the Conqueror wanted to know exactly what he had in England. He sent people all around the country, asking many questions. And they made a big book called the Domesday Book. The book showed how much farming land there was in England and how many animals. We know a lot about life in Norman England because of the Domesday Book. The time from William the Conqueror's rule until the 15th century. In England is often called the Middle Ages. In the Middle Ages, most people lived in villages. The people of the village had to work for the nobles and give them crops and animals. The nobles lived very well in big houses and with expensive food. But most people were very poor. Religion was very important in the Middle Ages and the Catholic Church became very powerful. From 1095 to 1291, Soldiers went to other countries to fight religious battles. There was more fighting in the 14th and 15th centuries. As France and England fought the Hundred Years' War, hoping to win land from each other. Many of the battles of the Hundred Years' War were fought by knights. As well as fighting battles for nobles and for the king. Knights also fought as a sport in competitions called jousting tournaments. Young men who wanted to become knights had to spend many years learning all the things that a knight could do. In 1348, a terrible illness called the Black Death came to England. Only about four million people lived in England at that time. But in two years, 
nearly one and a half million of them died. From 1455 to 1485. There were terrible battles between people who wanted the kings of the country to be from different families. And many more people died. Finally, in 1485, Henry Tudor became the first Tudor king of England. King Henry VII. Some of the Tudor kings and queens are now very famous in England's history. Henry VIII, who became the king in 1509, lived some of the time at the Tower of London. But he had other beautiful palaces in and around London, including the Palace of Westminster and Hampton Court. He and the people around him lived very well. They wore the best clothes and ate wonderful food. And at the palaces there was always dancing, sport, poetry, and music. Henry enjoyed life, and he drank and ate too much. When he became the king, he was a sporty, good looking young man. But later he became so fat he could not walk. England was a Catholic country, but Henry VIII wanted England to leave the Catholic Church. So he started a new church. It was a Protestant church called the Church of England, and he controlled it. Anyone who disagreed with the new church was executed, killed for their crime. When Henry VIII was ruling England, more than 70,000 people were killed because of crimes or because they disagreed with the king about religion or other important things. Six years after Henry VIII died, his oldest daughter Mary, the Daughter he had with his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, became queen. Mary I of England. She was a Catholic and wanted England to be a Catholic country again. But many people had left the Catholic Church and had become Protestants. Mary executed hundreds of Protestants who refused to become Catholic again. But in 1558, Mary died. And her half sister Elizabeth, the daughter Henry had with his second wife and Boleyn, became the queen. Queen Elizabeth I was a Protestant. But she did not make Catholics follow her religion. And she soon became one of the best loved of England's kings and queens. The second half of the 16th century, which was known as the Elizabethan period was a very important time for English literature. Many people liked to go to the theatre, and William Shakespeare wrote a lot of plays and poetry at this time. Ships also began to travel to other parts of the world. Sir Walter Raleigh sailed to America, and Sir Francis Drake became the first Englishman to sail around the world. But life in England was also very difficult for many people in the Elizabethan period. There was less work in farming now. And a lot of people were very poor. There was a lot of crime. But no police. And when people were caught for crimes, they were often executed. After Queen Elizabeth I died in 1603, kings and queens called. The Stuarts came to power in England. The Stuarts were from Scotland. And for the first time, they ruled both England and Scotland. The second of the Stuart kings was Charles I. He argued with Parliament because he spent a lot of money fighting wars in Europe. And in 1642, he started a civil war. For seven years. The king's men and parliament's men fought against each other. And thousands died. But with Oliver Cromwell as leader, parliament's army became very strong and fought very well. And in 1649, they won the war. Charles I was executed. 
and for eleven years England had no king or queen. The country was ruled by Cromwell and Parliament. Cromwell was a Puritan, a Protestant who believed in a simple, hard-working life, and when he ruled, there was no sport or dancing in England, and theatres were closed. When Cromwell died, England was ready to have a king again, and the Stuarts came to power once more. There were some difficult times for England in the second half of the 17th century. In 1665, another terrible illness came to London and killed nearly 70,000 people. And a year later, large parts of London were burnt down in the Great Fire of London. There were many other changes at this time too. England now traded, bought and sold things, with many other countries. So English people could get different foods like tomatoes, chocolate, coffee and tea for the first time. People continued to work on the land. But now there were other jobs. In cloth-making or glass-making and in the coal or iron industries. London was rebuilt with wider roads and many beautiful new buildings. And scientists like Sir Isaac Newton began to do important work and learn. Many interesting things. England started its first colonies too. These were other parts of the world, like America, which were ruled by England. Four. The first time in the 17th century, people from England went to live and work in these places. There was one more important change as England entered the 18th century. In 1707, the Act of Union brought England, Wales and Scotland together with one parliament as Great Britain. The 18th and early 19th centuries were called the Georgian period because Britain's kings were George I, 2nd, 3rd and 4th. But during this time, kings became much less powerful and Parliament really began to rule the country. An industrial revolution began. In Britain too. Machines were built, and they were used in many different industries. People could now make many things very quickly, and because of this towns began to grow. In 1783, Britain lost the American War of Independence. So America was no longer ruled by Britain and became independent. Britain did not have its old American colonies anymore. But it now found new ones. In that same year, France gave its colonies in Canada to Britain. And by the end of the 18th century, Britain had won many battles in India, which soon became an important part of the British Empire. This was a great time for exploration, traveling to different places to find new things. The famous sailor captain Cook visited many new lands and was the first European to go to Australia and New Zealand. In 1801, Ireland and Britain came together as the United Kingdom, with one parliament. Today, Northern Ireland is the only part of Ireland which belongs to the UK. The ruler of this new UK, from 1837 until 1901, was Queen Victoria. Victoria ruled for longer than any other English or British king or queen. And she was much loved by many of her people. In the Victorian period, the British Empire became bigger and more important. And the Industrial Revolution continued. The country was growing. But at first this made life difficult for many people. More and more factories were built in the UK. 
and factory work was very hard and very dangerous. Towns got bigger and bigger. But people put their rubbish and dirty water in the streets. So there was a lot of illness. But soon important new changes started to happen. Towns became cleaner. And in 1880, all children aged 5 to 10 began to go to school. People had electric lights and telephones for the first time. And because the railways grew, they could now travel around the country easily. By 1901, when Queen Victoria died, the modern United Kingdom was arriving. The area of the United Kingdom is around 245,000 square kilometres. The capital is London. Situated on the River Thames in the southeastern part of England. Great Britain consists of England, Wales, and Scotland. While the United Kingdom also includes Northern Ireland. The political system of the United Kingdom has provided stability since the 19th century. It is a unitary system centred on London, with some responsibilities devolved to local governments. The United Kingdom is a parliamentary democracy dominated by the monarchy. Although almost all responsibility is deferred to the government and both houses of parliament, the monarch and the royal family symbolize unit and power. In Parliament the House of Lords still consists mainly of hereditary or appointed peers, while members of the House of Commons are elected. The United Kingdom is a part of the European Union and a member of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, NATO. England the countryside connecting these five regions is composed mainly of rich agricultural plains. The principal rivers in England are the Thames and the Severn. Scotland has three distinct areas. The Northern Highlands. With Ben Nevis. The highest mountain in the United Kingdom. Then the Central Lowlands and the Southern Uplands. The main rivers in Scotland are the Clyde. Spey and Tweed. There are many lakes in Scotland. Most of Wales is occupied by the Cambrian Mountains, and much of the land is suitable only for pasture. The highest point of Wales is found in Snowdonia. Northern Ireland consists mainly of low flats and hills. The largest freshwater lake of the United Kingdom is Loch Nee situated in the centre of Northern Ireland. The main rivers are the Ban, Ern, and Foyle. People have settled in the British Isles from many parts of the world and for various reasons. Some of them want to avoid political or religious persecution, others look for a better life. The Irish have long made their homes in Britain, as have Jews. They arrived toward the end of the 19th century and in the 1930s. After 1945 large numbers of other European refugees settled in the country. The large communities from certain parts of India or Asia arrived in the 1950s and 1960s. There are also large groups of Americans, Australians and Chinese as well as various other Europeans, such as Greeks, Russians, Poles, Serbs, Estonians, Latvians, Armenians, Turkish, Cypriots, Italians, and Spaniards. Since the early 1970s, immigrants from Latin America Southeast Asia and Sri Lanka have looked for asylum in Britain. English is the major language throughout the United Kingdom. There are also minority languages which are of Celtic origin, Welsh, Scottish and Irish Gaelic. These languages are still spoken by some people in Western Wales, in the West Highlands and in the Irish Republic. 
almost three-fifths of the population belong to the Church of England. Roman Catholics constitute one-eight of the population. There are some Presbyterians, Methodists, and Baptists. The remainders are mostly other Protestants, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, and Sikhs. The various Christian denominations in the United Kingdom have arisen from the schisms that divided the Church. The greatest of these occurred in England in the 16th century, when Henry VIII rejected the absolute rule of the Pope. This break with Rome helped the adoption of some Protestant principles and became the foundation of the Church of England. In the 17th century further schisms divided the Church of England, these were associated with the rise of the Puritan movement. Which? With its desire for simpler forms of worship and government. Led to a proliferation of non-conformist churches. Such as those of the Baptists and the Congregationalists. The Society of Friends, Quakers, also originated at that time. The 19th century also saw the introduction of sects from the United States as well as a marked increase in the number of Jews in Britain. The first Jewish community in Britain after their expulsion in 1290 was that established in London during the 17th century. And in the 19th century Jews also settled in many of the large provincial cities. More than half of all British Jews live in London. And the rest are essentially members of urban communities. Jewish congregations in Britain now form the second largest Jewish community in Europe. Britain was part of the continent of Europe until about 600 BC. The early inhabitants of Britain were Celts who settled in Ireland 2,500 to 3,000 years ago. Julius Caesar invaded Britain in 55 and 54 BC but the island was not subdued by Rome until the 1st century AD. England was added to the Roman Empire in 43 AD. The Romans built camps, forts and roads throughout the land and also Hadrian's Wall as the protection against the invasion of the Celtic tribes from the north. The Roman towns and forts were connected by the network of roads which was used by the British for many centuries. The names of Roman towns in Britain often end with Chester or Castor or Cester, in Latin meaning an army camp. Trade flourished and the Christianity was brought to Britain. After the withdrawal of Roman legions in 410 the waves of Nordic tribes of the Jutes. The Angles and the Saxons invaded Britain and forced many Celtic inhabitants into Cornwall. Wales and Scotland, Welsh means foreign. The Nordic tribes fought with the Vikings and the Danes from the 8th to the 11th centuries. In the late 9th century Alfred the Great, ruler of Wessex, repelled a Danish invasion, which helped bring about the unification of England under Athelstan. About that time, the Scots won dominance in Scotland, and Malcolm completed the unification of Scotland. In the 11th century the Danish king Canute made Britain part of his Scandinavian empire. The names of Saxon towns often end with Ing, Ham, and Tun. The last successful invasion was by French-speaking Normans led by William, the Duke of Normandy, who became William the Conqueror after defeating the Saxon King Harold in the Battle of Hastings in 1066. He became the King of England. William the Conqueror and other Norman kings established a strong central government and state. Norman noblemen were appointed to high positions. In this period the French language of the Norman rulers merged with the Anglo-Saxon of the common people to form the English language. From the 11th century, Scotland came under the influence of the English throne. Henry II fought Ireland in the late 12th century. 
His son Richard I and John had conflicts with the clergy and nobles. And John was forced to a compromise in the Magna Carta in 1215. The result was the establishment of the constitutional principle that the king must rule according to law. During the 13th century, the parliamentary system slowly developed. During the reign of Edward I, the first parliament was convened. Edward conquered Wales and made it a principality of England. He also attempted to dominate the affairs of Scotland. In 1314 Robert the Bruce won independence for Scotland by defeating the English forces at Bannockburn. And in 1328 English monarchs recognised the independence of Scotland. The House of Stuart ascended to the Scottish throne in 1371 with the coronation of Robert II. English dynastic claims to large parts of France led to the Hundred Years' War and the defeat of England. A long civil war. The War of Roses. Between the House of Lancaster, whose emblem was a white rose, and the House of York, whose emblem was a red rose. Lasted. From 1455 to 1485 and ended with the establishment of the powerful Tudor House. The Tudors became the ruling family of England following the War of Roses. The first Tudor king was Henry VII. Religious independence from Rome was secured when the Church of England and Wales was separated from the authority of the Pope in 1534 by King Henry VIII. This church was fused with England. Under Queen Elizabeth I Britain became a major sea power, leading to the founding of colonies in the New World and the expansion of trade with Europe and the Orient. In 1588 England defeated the Spanish Armada and this, together with the explorations carried out by Sir Francis Drake and Sir Walter Raleigh, helped establish British supremacy on the seas. Scotland was united with England when James VI of Scotland was crowned James I of England in 1603. Elizabeth I had no children so her closest relative James VI of Scotland, the son of Elizabeth's old rival, Mary Queen of Scots, became King James I of England and the Stuart dynasty began. For the next 100 years England and Scotland remained separated but were ruled by one monarch, it was a personal union of the two kingdoms. A struggle between Parliament and the Stuart kings led to a bloody civil war. The country was divided between the supporters of Charles I, who wanted to rule absolutely, royalists, and the supporters of Parliament, who wanted to limit the king's powers, parliamentarians. Finally Oliver Cromwell, the Puritan army leader, established a Republican King Charles I was beheaded. After eleven years of Puritan rule under Oliver Cromwell and his son, the monarchy was restored with Charles II. But the Glorious Revolution in 1688 confirmed the sovereignty of Parliament. The Act of Union in 1707 united Scotland and England and formed the Kingdom of Great Britain. The Hanoverians ascended to the English throne in 1714. When George Louis, Elector of Hanover, became George I of Great Britain. During the reign of George III, 13 Great Britons, American colonies won independence in 1783. This was followed by a period of war with revolutionary France and later the empire of Napoleon Bonaparte. Britain's role in the defeat of Napoleon in 1815 strengthened its position as the leading world power. In 1801 legislation united Great Britain with Ireland to create the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. In the late 18th century the Industrial Revolution found its birthplace in Britain. And it remained the world's foremost economic power until the late 19th century. The greatest British technological innovations are E. G. James Watt Steam Engine. A steam locomotive developed in 1814 by George Stevenson. 
first public railway in 1825. A loom in textile industry from 1767. During the reign of Queen Victoria. Britain's colonial expansion reached its zenith. Though the older dominions, such as Canada and Australia, were gradually granted independence. Large parts of Asia and Africa were added to the United Kingdom in this period. The growth of parliamentary government during the 19th century was enhanced by the leadership of prime ministers such as Sir Robert Peel, Benjamin Disraeli, and William Gladstone. The extension of franchise in 1832 and 1867. The formation of trade unions. The development of universal public education were among the social changes which came with industrialization and urbanization in the 19th century. The United Kingdom entered World War I allied with France and Russia in 1914. Britain suffered huge casualties and economic losses. Following the war, revolutionary disorder erupted in Ireland. And in 1921 the Irish Free State was granted dominion status. The six counties of Ulster remained in the United Kingdom as Northern Ireland. Independence movement became active also in India and other colonies. The United Kingdom entered World War II in 1939 and battled German and Japanese forces in Europe, Africa, and Asia. The country suffered major bombing damage. Winston Churchill, with his famous victory sign, offered the nation nothing but blood, toil, tears and sweat. Following the war the Irish Free State became the Irish Republic and left the Commonwealth. India also gained independence from the United Kingdom after the war. Throughout the post-war period and into the 1970s, the United Kingdom continued to grant independence to its overseas colonies and dependencies. The status of Northern Ireland became controversial as British troops were brought in to maintain order from the 1970s on. Violence and terrorist acts increased between Roman Catholics seeking union with the Republic of Ireland and Protestants wishing to remain part of the United Kingdom. Domestically, during the 20th century, the United Kingdom underwent a Quiet revolution with the advent of the Labour Party and the creation of a welfare state. The first Labour ministry was established in 1924 under Ramsay MacDonald. And in the 1945 elections, the party, espousing a socialism platform, won an overwhelming majority in Parliament and started a nationalisation programme. The state bought out the shareholders of the Bank of England the Coal Social Insurance Plan and also set up a national health service to provide free medical care. Subsequent conservative governments denationalized such sectors as iron and steel and trucking. But the basic welfare state remained. In 1973 the United Kingdom joined the European Economic Community. The United Kingdom is a constitutional monarchy and a parliamentary democracy. Its constitution is partly unwritten and is flexible. It is also based on customs and traditions. The constitution's basic sources are legislative acts of parliament and decisions made by courts of law. The head of state is a reigning monarch. But he, she can act only on the advice of his, her ministers. At present, the head of the United Kingdom is Queen Elizabeth II. She was born on April 21, 1926. But the official birthday celebration takes place during June. She got married on November 20, 1947 and assessed to the throne on February 6, 1952. The coronation took place on June 2, 1953. The Parliament is the supreme law-making body in the country. It consists of the monarch the House of Commons and the House of Lords. British parliamentary system is one of the oldest in the world. It developed slowly during 13th century after King John's signature of Magna Carta in 1215. 
The House of Commons has 651 elected and paid members of Parliament, 524 from England, 72 from Scotland, 38 from Wales and 17 from Northern Ireland. They are elected for five years but the Prime Minister can call general elections at any time. The House of Lords is made up of the hereditary and appointed peers, Lords Temporal. Two archbishops and 24 bishops of the Church of England, Lords Spiritual. The major part of Parliament's work is revising the government's work. On the first day when the Parliament session is opened the Queen reads a speech that outlines the government's policy. This opening ceremony takes place in the House of Lords. From Monday to Thursday all ministers must answer MPs' questions for one hour. Two days a week the Prime Minister must answer MPs' questions. Another important parliamentary task is lawmaking. A proposal of a new law must pass through both houses and then is sent to the Queen for royal assent. The royal right of veto has not been exercised since the 18th century and the legislative power of the House of Lords was reduced in 1911. The main function of the House of Lords is to revise legislation but it has just the right to delay legislation. The right to vote is given to all citizens at the age of 18. Citizens vote in parliamentary and local elections and also in elections to the European Parliament. Each member of the House of Commons represents one parliamentary constituency. Registration of electors is compulsory but voting itself ISNT. Candidates for election to parliament or a council are normally chosen by the local parties. The House of Commons is elected for a maximum term of five years. Reduced in 1911 from seven. At any time. During these five years. The Prime Minister has the right to request the monarch to dissolve parliament and call a general election. The United Kingdom belongs among the top industrial countries. It is economically connected with the Commonwealth countries. It is also a member of G7. The range of mineral resources in the United Kingdom is limited. Metals of great importance are tin and zinc. Other adequate supplies of non-metallic minerals are sand and gravel. Limestone. Dolomite. Chalk. Slate. Barite. Talc. Clay. Kaolin and gypsum. Sand. Gravel. And limestone are used in construction. The United Kingdom has larger energy resources than any other European country. Including oil. Natural gas. And coal. Power stations are the major customers for coal. The agricultural system is very well developed. The main products are oats, hay, wheat, barley, sugar beet, fruit and vegetables, cattle, sheep. Pigs and poultry are the most important farm animals in the United Kingdom. The country's role as a major world financial center and its discovery of natural gas in 1965 and oil in 1969 in the North Sea and their commercial exploitation reduced the dependence on more traditional sources of energy and were major influences on the health of the internal economy and on national economic policies. Because of the limitations of its natural resources, the United Kingdom has been forced to export more. Products that the country sells abroad are machinery, automobiles and other transport equipment, computers, aerospace equipment, electrical and electronics goods, and oil. The main industries are steel, metals, vehicles, shipbuilding, shipping, banking insurance, textiles, chemicals, electronics, aircraft, machinery, distilling. In the 1980s the United Kingdom accelerated privatization of publicly owned corporations.
The general improvement of the British economy has also meant better standard of living. Unemployment and inflation rates were gradually reduced but remained high. The highest proportions of employees, more than two-thirds, are in the service sectors. With financial services and distribution the largest. Manufacturing. Although it has declined, employs more than one-fifth of all workers. Smaller numbers are in construction. Energy. Agriculture. Forestry. And fishing. The number of part-time workers has increased considerably. The United Kingdom, which is quite small but of a high population density, has changed. Nearly two-thirds of all households have one car, and some have two or more. The decline in the use of local buses has caused the importance to maintain and develop road networks. Intercity rail services have been improved. Also air traffic has grown, particularly international flights.